When a team wins the draft lottery and are lucky enough to win the number one overall pick, more times than not it means one thing. That team is one of the worst teams in the NBA. The idea is this. A struggling team can revitalize itself by selecting a once in a generation talent. Historically, the number one overall pick comes with immeasurable pressure. But really, how successful can the first pick be in changing the trajectory of the franchise? Let's dive into that. But first, the next goal for this channel is to reach 3,000 subscribers. To help us get there, please subscribe. And thank you. So, here's the thing. Since 1984, in nearly 40 NBA drafts, just 10 players who were selected as the number one overall pick have won a championship. But even that number doesn't address the question. Out of those 10 players, just 5 of them won a championship with the team that drafted them. Of those 5 players, Hakeem Olajuwon, drafted first overall in 1984, is the exception among the other 4. He won 2 NBA championships with the Houston Rockets in 1994 and 1995. Conveniently, those championships were won while Michael Jordan was on his minor league baseball hiatus. But besides Hakeem's two rings, the four other first overall picks that won a championship with the team that drafted them all have something in common. They did it as teammates, two number one overall picks on the same team. Let's start with the more recent example. Kyrie Irving was drafted first overall in the 2011 NBA draft. He was of course drafted by the Cleveland Cavaliers. The Cavs prior to drafting Kyrie were atrocious, with a 19-63 record. The Cavs relied on Kyrie Irving immediately, but the team missed the playoffs for his first three years in the NBA. Of course, that all started to change in 2014. Enter another first overall pick from the draft eight years prior to Kyrie and LeBron James. The two players, both drafted by Cleveland, were combining for the ultimate effort to bring that franchise a banner. In their first year together, the Cavs jumped from the previous 10 seed to the number two seed in the East. They then breezed through the playoffs, but they fell short in the finals after Kyrie Irving sustained a fractured knee. Of course, the Cavs got their rematch against the Warriors the next year in the 2016 Finals. In that series, they made history, becoming the first team in the NBA Finals to come back from a 3-1 deficit and win the title. While Kyrie Irving was definitely coming into his own and had developed into an NBA star, the addition of another number one overall pick is what really made the difference for the Cavs. Kyrie Irving was not going to win a championship on the Cavs without LeBron James, but it goes both ways. From 2003 to 2010, LeBron James faced a similar problem. He was selected to a struggling Cavs organization, and even with several monumental efforts, without a companion number one overall pick, LeBron couldn't win a championship in Cleveland from 2003 to 2010. The idea of a savior to the city isn't as simple as it's often portrayed. Does LeBron even go back to Cleveland if there's no Kyrie Irving there? Does he win a championship there without him? Well, the 2018 NBA Finals makes that seem unlikely. Countless number one overall picks have become superstars, but the dream of a young player turning an organization around, willing them to a championship, seems more like a myth than a realistic goal. And of course, as previously mentioned, Kyrie Irving and LeBron James aren't the only number one pick duo to win a championship, specifically for the organization that drafted them. On December 23, 1996, the 1987 number one overall pick, David Robinson, suffered a season-ending injury. The Spurs, previously a Western Conference contender, faltered to a 20-62 record in the 96-97 season. Greg Popovich became an NBA head coach for the first time when he replaced Bob Hill, and the Spurs secured the top draft pick through the draft lottery, and at that time there was little doubt who they would select. Tim Duncan was officially drafted first overall on June 25, 1997. And in just Duncan's sophomore season, the two number one picks, known as the Twin Towers, did the same thing for their franchise as Kyrie and LeBron. They won the first championship in their team's history. Double team fires at the buzzer. No, the San Antonio Spurs win their first ever NBA championship. 
Four of the five first overall picks that brought championships to the city that drafted them in the last 40 years did so as teammates. But even outside the standard of winning with the team that drafted you, the other recent first overall picks that won championships did so with similar situations. The most recent, Andrew Wiggins, the first overall pick in the 2014 NBA Draft, won a championship in the 2022 Finals with the Warriors. At the time, Wiggins was arguably the second best offensive player next to Stephen Curry, the best player from his draft class. Anthony Davis, the number one pick from the 2012 NBA Draft, won a chip in 2020 with the Lakers. Of course, that championship was won with LeBron James, another one pick and it was LeBron who took home the finals MVP. It's also worth mentioning that while the big was past his prime, that team also featured Dwight Howard, the first pick from the 04 draft. I mean, even the Showtime Lakers featured Magic, Kareem, and James Worthy, three first overall picks. But what does this all mean? What does this tell us about the number one pick? Well, no matter how you slice it, we're really stating the obvious. One player can't do it alone, even if you're a generational talent. Maybe it's a coincidence, but at the time this video is being published, the number one seed in the Western Conference is led by two number one overall picks in Anthony Edwards and Carl Anthony Towns, and the Wolves look like serious contenders this year. As for Victor Wembanyama and the Spurs, they might need another top pick added to their roster if he's going to lead the Spurs to a new dynasty, and with their current record, they might just have one on the way. Again, we're really trying to grow the channel. Thank you for the support so far, and please subscribe if you haven't already.